What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 59th C++ tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use function templates but instead of just a single parameter like last time we're going to be using a multiple parameter. So let me go ahead and explain to you guys what the heck I'm talking about first. You know in the last tutorial I taught you guys how to build basically a generic function to add like two integers together or to add two doubles together. Well, in this tutorial, we're going to be able to work with two different data types. For example, we're going to be able to take an integer and a double and add those together. Or maybe, you know, a long and an integer and add those together. So they don't have to be the same data type, all the parameters we pass in. We can work with two different types of data in the same function. So we're going to need to set this up a little bit different than we have before. So let's go ahead and first get two different types of data to work with. So let's go ahead and make an integer variable x and set this equal to 89 or any integer you want and go ahead and make another you know double variable it really doesn't matter the data type as long as they're different. So pass it in a double y and set this equal to you know some 56.78 or something like that. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a function to compare these two numbers and just return whatever number is smaller. So in this case it would return 56.78. So let's go ahead and pass in those two numbers x and y and hopefully if we build our function correctly it'll print out the smaller number right on the screen. So let's go ahead and set up this function template right now. So like before whenever we're building a function template we always need the keyword template but we need to spell it correctly template just like that and now unlike before where we just had one generic class and we named it Bucky or something we're going to be working with more than one generic class so make sure you name your classes something that you know you can work with later on I like to just name mine first and second and by the way I might as well mention this to you guys you guys are gonna see this a lot like capital T and capital U it's like kind of a programming standard to use one capital letter whenever you're making a template class but I really don't like doing that I like uh, you know something a little more descriptive like first and class second um you know if you're in like a programming class or you're watching this because you forgot how to do this for your job or something you typically want to use one capital letter but whenever I'm programming you're just gonna have to deal with it so now that we have a template this line is pretty much saying this we're gonna be working with two data types but we don't know what those data types are yet so we're gonna be giving them generic names so first and second so whenever we're building our function you first write the return type which is first and now our function name was smaller and it took two parameters one number and we'll call this one a and another number and we'll call this one B and all our function itself does is hello and all our function does is it takes two numbers and returns whatever one smaller and we can do that by writing one nifty line of code if a is less than B then return a if not return B so it's gonna be saying alright is a less than B if it is return a if it's not return B so it's basically gonna to return to you the smaller number so now let's go ahead and now that our function is working properly let's go ahead and test this and make sure it works as you can see we compared 89 and 56.78 and it turned that double 56.78 into an integer and you're saying alright we just compared two numbers so shouldn't it be giving us um, just 56.78 why did it chop off the 78 that's because of this whenever we built our function template it pretty much saw what type of data we were passing in so we're saying alright we wanna get the smaller of two numbers we wanna first pass you in an integer 89 and then a double 56.78 so I said alright make first in anywhere you see first change it to an integer so it said alright I'm gonna change this to int this to double and I'm gonna return an int because that was the first thing we passed in so since this return type was the first type of data we passed in it converted this double to an integer because remember anytime you saw first it converted it to an int um, we could have changed this around we could have you know 
pass this one in first so it was y x and whenever we did that we would get 56.78 in that way we could have it more precise because in this case scenario the first thing we passed in is a double and the second number we passed in was an int so whenever it's looking at your template wherever it sees first it's going to replace it with double and that includes the return type right here in the first parameter and the second parameter would of course be an integer so it would take a double and an integer and since it returned a double that's why we got back the double so basically what I'm saying is this whenever we're working with two different types of data you need more than one generic classes or pretty much placeholders basically a generic or excuse me basically um, a generic class is just a variable for the type of data instead of the value itself does that make sense to you guys so instead of having a variable for this you have a variable for this simple enough and these variables can only be types of data like int double long yada 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 so basically people usually build these templates to work with um, you usually don't see more than three or four it's usually one or two but yeah that's basically how it works anytime you want to build a function template that takes more than one type of data you need to separate them into more than one generic classes and then you can use those generic classes just like you would any other type of data so hopefully you guys understand what that means um, again if this is just too confusing and you don't want to keep track you can go ahead and build a lot of overloaded functions and it's gonna work you know just fine but if you want to use this it's gonna save you a little bit of coding and you know it's a little more confusing to look at but once you got it down uh, you know it makes your life a whole lot easier so thank you guys for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe if you have any questions just ask me on my forum and I'll try to answer them for you guys sometimes I'm busy but I can usually answer them for you guys so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video